Hi everyone. Again, my name is uh, Comfort Asokoro Ogaji, Managing Consultant at uh, Rich Flood International Limited in Nigeria and uh, Rich Flood LLC in America. So I am repeating this module nine because in the previous uh, video, we in the previous webinar, I couldn't capture uh, the project in Florida area. So repeating this model being environmental and social assessments and management systems, ESMS, of the uh, World Bank or of the IFC. Okay, I mentioned in the webinar that I'm going to be covering uh, number one and two. Okay, so haven't covered that. I will just go straight to um, the project influenced area. Uh, we talked about the policy being uh, providing a framework for investment projects and how all of it is going to be managed and that the policy has to stand with the principles of performance standards and that uh, it has to ensure conformance and be responsible. Uh, the organization has to be responsible for policy execution and also ensure excellent communication throughout the policy execution. Okay. So we also captured the investigation of risks and impact. And uh, I did mention uh, all of those points and also said that we have to consider the greenhouse gas emission. So uh, I couldn't throw enough light on the project area of influence, which will be my focus for repeating this module nine. Okay. So uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the client has to establish and maintain a process for identifying the environmental and social risk and impact for the project. Uh, the, 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 the scope of the risks and the impact identification process, uh, like I mentioned briefly at the previous webinar, we have to be consistent with good international industry practice. So the, the for greenfield area, that is, uh, like I said, the greenfield developments, uh, it could be a greenfield development, it could also be an existing asset. So for the greenfield development, uh, which specifically identified physical elements, facilities that are likely to generate significant impacts, the client will conduct a comprehensive Asia. You remember that I mentioned that earlier including checking alternatives uh, for project execution where available, you know, where there are such options, the alternatives should be checked. So when the project involves uh, existing assets, I mentioned that uh, a, a social audit should be considered, or if you like, environmental audit or hazard assessments, you know, can be appropriate and sufficient to identify uh, the risk and impact. So if assets, <clears throat> to be developed or to be acquired uh, or to be financed have yet to be defined, the establishment of an environmental and social due diligence process will identify the risk or the impact at a point in the future when the physical elements, assets, facilities are reasonably understood. Since maybe for now, it is yet to be defined or yet to be acquired. So, but even at that, the risk and impact identification process will be based on recent environmental and social baseline data at an appropriate level of detail that may be uh, available. So the process also consider all relevant environmental and social risks of the project, including the issues identified you know, in all other performance standards and those who are likely to be affected by such uh, risks and impacts. In limited high risk circumstances, it, it can be you know, appropriate for the clients to uh, uh, complement uh, the, the environmental impact identification process with uh, specific human rights due diligence, like I mentioned. You know, so the risk and impact identification process uh, should also consider greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, I mentioned that earlier. So for now, the projects uh, affected, uh, I mean, area of influence, you know, the associated facilities I mentioned should, uh, should, be, should be, the associated facilities are usually facilities that are not funded as part of the project. If you remember, I mentioned uh, 
it, it, it will not have been constructed. Such facilities could not have been constructed or expanded if the project did not exist and without which the project will not be available, such as a railway line or road you know, construction that is associated with the facility. So when we say accumulative impacts, it means impacts that result from the incremental uh, exposure, or we can call it the incremental impact on areas or resources used or directly impacted by the project from other existing uh, developments at the time the risks and impact identification process is conducted. So cumulative impacts are limited to those impacts generally recognized as important on the basis of scientific concerns, all right? So uh, the, in the event of risks and impact in the project area of influence resulting from a third party's action, you know, the client will address those risks and impact in a manner commensurate with the client's control and influence over the third parties and uh, with due regard of course to conflict of interest so where the where the clients can reasonably exercise control the risks and impact identification process should also consider those risks and impacts associated with primary supply chains all right so this is uh, what i needed to stress more on the uh, webinar what we missed at the last webinar so I hope I have captured your expectation and uh, thank you for getting this reviewed version of the webinar. Please subscribe to our channel. We'll be very glad to uh, hear from you or to share your project experience, share your project experience with us. Or if you have a challenging project, we can, we're happy to work with you. Okay, thank you and goodbye for now.